Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19. And my cold is starting to get a little bit better, although I'm now rather croaky. Like, I, I had previously, you know, my throat was quite sore along with it, and that is a little bit inconvenient for someone that needs to talk for a living. However, the sore throat bit has now disappeared, so I can now talk. It's just that I've gone extremely croaky. So now I am living in abject fear of completely losing my voice, um, which naturally is going to be somewhat detrimental to things if I do, but hopefully I won't, and hopefully everything will be all tickety-boo and A-OK. -okay. We'll have to wait and see. So as you can see... As of recording this, the new update has not yet hit. Well, I say as you can see, uh, as you can probably guess, or otherwise I would have been talking excitedly about it. And I'm not talking excitedly about it, so it's not here yet. Which means that today's episode, and most likely tomorrow's episode as well, is not going to have anything about the new update in it. I'm hoping... I am hoping that after that we will be able to be looking at the new update. But I don't know. We don't know at the moment. It depends entirely on what's happening with the update. There could very well be a whole host of bugs in it that we don't know anything about. And in which case they need to sort all those bugs out. And then we will hopefully get the new stuff. Um, once we do, don't worry. We will be having a good look at it. And we will be using it a lot. There's a lot of stuff that I want to do. And we're going to continue on with trying to earn a pile of money ready for this update because it you know the terraforming does require cash from what I've seen so in order to be able to terraform up a huge chunk of our farm here we're going to want to plow a huge chunk of our farm um, unfortunately there is no particularly fast way to go plowing I think Actually, well, no, I was going to say, I think you can, like, use the terraforming bit, but I don't think you can. I think you've only got, like, um, you've got some concrete and tarmac and stuff like that that you can leave going on it, uh, that you can leave as textures or you can leave grass. But the grass texture is not actually planted grass. It's just the base green texture, which does mean that if you want grass, if you want grass growing, that when you've done your terraforming and you've sort of smoothed it all over and you're happy with it, you do then have to run over it with the plow, which obviously that's going to slow things down a little bit. That's fine. That's something that I can live with because, you know, if you go and do a load of work in an area in real life and you do your terraforming and everything, um... I say terraforming, you know, digger work. Uh, yeah, that's, that's generally what we call it. We don't normally have a terraforming company. We have a landscaping company. Um, there, there is a little bit of a difference between the two. So, yeah, when you've done your landscaping, you do then usually... You don't normally sort of plant the grass seed while you're landscaping. You normally go over it afterwards with something... I mean, personally, I've often been the one that's gone out and done it and i haven't actually plowed the ground up or anything i've just gone over with a bucket of grass seed and a rake um done it by hand but you do still have to do an extra step so essentially you are just doing an extra step in order to be able to have planted grass because otherwise you've just got some compacted dirt there and not a lot else uh we just bring that bit up to there so we have at least managed to remove a whole load of shrubs and I don't particularly like the shrubs so I'm quite pleased that we've gotten rid of a huge chunk of those um, you know the shrubs do look good the shrubs look good uh, but at the same time they're really really annoying because they get in the way so it, I, I am pleased that we're able to get rid of some of those um, I'm not I people have suggested several mods to me for like using um, you know, leveling out in great big areas, things like that. I'm deliberately avoiding all of those mods. I'm not touching any of those mods for, for now because I want to see what the terraforming stuff can do first. And then after we've played around with terraforming stuff and patch 1.2, uh, then I'll have a look at other mods. And that's the other reason that I don't want to install very many mods at the moment because, you know, patch 1.1.3, 1.1.2 1 and all that, they're fairly similar and there shouldn't be any issues with mods. But when you start going up to, like, patch 1.2, um, it's, it's a whole new version of the game. Um, so there's a bigger chance that there's going to be mod conflict. There's a bigger chance that it could stop some mods from working. I mean, yeah, chances are it'd probably be all right. 
but the more mods I've got, the more chance of something going wrong. So if I limit the mods, I'm only using the mod hub ones at the moment. I'm hoping the mod hub ones will survive the transition. They may not, in which case we'll have to get rid of some of them. But mostly the ones on mod hub at the moment are just machines. There is a couple of placeables, but I haven't actually used any of them. So we should be okay with that. About the only thing that is going to make possibly any difference is the camera mod. Um, that's the only external one that I've got at the moment that is, you know, obviously one that's not from ModHub. Um, all of the mods that I'm using are straight from the ModHub. So a plan today, I'm going to do a bit of ploughing. We're going to at least go until we're doing full lengths up and down the field. I don't know how well this is going to work out for us. Uh, bring that one over to... You know what? I'm thinking that we ought to make this piece here just a little bit wider because otherwise we're going to go too far with our plow and it's going to make a mess. It's going to look untidy and it's going to be absolutely heartbreaking. It really is. So if we just tidy this little slice up along here, I'll do a run to there and then flip this one round. Actually, I don't need to flip the plow around. I just need to flip the tractor around a little bit. There we go, like that. Looking good. And then we can do a little bit of a run down here. Start to tidy it up a bit. I did pull in a little bit close to that tree. I'm still of two minds about this tree. I'm still genuinely considering chopping that tree down completely. This here, we definitely want to terraform this bit. This this, this rough patch right here. We definitely want to do something with that. I don't want to leave it like that. I don't like it like that. And I'll bring you down here. So now what I'd like to do is if I turn... Like that. I'm just going to sort of widen the area there that the plow can sit in. And then I can do just a little bit to tidy up along the bottom here. Just there. I've got plenty of room to sit the plow into it and just pull that through. There we go. Look at that. See? Absolutely perfect. And then if I do that once more, I've then got plenty of room for the plow to run through. And everything is all tickety-boo once more. Right. We'll lift that one up and swivel that one around. I am... Very croaky today, aren't I? Like I'm, I, I can hear it in my voice. I can, I can sort of feel it. I am, I'm feeling very croaky. I'm feeling sort of, you, you know, that kind of Barry White um, quality that people take on when they get cold. You know, you, you got to have a cold at a certain stage. You can talk just fine. You don't have like a sore throat or anything like that. But your voice goes super croaky. I'm, I'm, I'm at the Barry White stage right now, and. I've always liked the Barry White stage because you can really project down deep. Um, well, sometimes. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. We are really struggling with our plowing right here. We definitely need to do some terror. I'm, I, I'm, I'm thinking that tree's going to have to go. I'm thinking that in order to be able to properly terraform this piece right here, we are going to have to get rid of that tree. And, yeah, I, I didn't really want to because it, it's an awful lot of work to remove that tree. I, I mean, I guess what we could do is we could get the other wood chipper. I know we, we've sent back the first one, so we could get the other wood chipper, that one that we didn't actually use yet, and we could use that one because, you know, we, we'd be able to make a whole load of wood chips. The only downside with that is that you still got to drag the trees all the way over to the sawmill. Uh, the, the wood chips. You've still got to take them all the way to the sawmill. And it is a bit of a trek going all the way to the sawmill every time with wood chips. So, I mean, yeah, we, we could get a bigger trailer. We could try that. We could do that instead. Rather than using the trailer that we've been using, we could try going for something just a little smidgen bigger. And hopefully that would make a bit of a difference. Let's see if we can just bring this along here a bit. Tidy that in. Just, just a fraction. Um, there we go. Let's try that. What's that like? That's not too bad, I think. Um, yeah, well, so we could try that. Or oh, there's the placeable wood chipper. And that, it, it sells direct, doesn't it? I don't know what it sort of does to the prices when you sell direct with the placeable one. And you drop the logs in the front and then it shreds them and turns them into wood chips and then sells them immediately. Um, might be worth getting that one and placing it down because we've got a whole load of trees around here. There is a lot of trees here. We've also got a load of trees over that side. So I'm not sure where the best place to put it would be. That's going to be the next major decision, of course, is where would we place... Oh, hang on. Hang on. I knew we would miss something. I absolutely knew it. Right. Uh, we'll leave that one there a minute. 
Let's go and get... Nope. Nope. You. Let's go and get you. We'll hitch you onto the... Um... Uh... Uh, stump grinder. That's the one that I'm looking for. We'll put you on here. And you can get going. And then... I'm actually thinking that... Maybe we should start doing some cultivating up there. Because, you know, we're not going to have... We're not going to be terraforming all of that field, are we? I'm, I want to do some terraforming around that field, but obviously not all of it. So maybe we could do a bit of cultivating. So let me go back to this one. Now, this one here, we've washed this one. I was told that this one, because I haven't really paid much attention to this one. If I go into the garage a minute and I have a look. This is 150 horsepower, this little tractor. 150 horses in this beast right here. So there is no reason that this can't do most of the jobs on the farm right now as it is without any questions whatsoever. You know, no reason at all. It ought to be able to do most of it. Where am I going to put this? Is that going to fit in there? I might be able to squeeze it in. I did have the plow in there, didn't I? And now if I try and... This one's not going to fit. You watch. You watch me try and jam it in there and then damage one of the wheels against the side of the stock box. It's just not going to have it. He says as he still tries to shove the thing in there anyway. Uh, okay, well it sort of worked. It did work. It's, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. It worked perfectly. So we'll take this one over. We will quickly move that seed drill out of the way. And then we can start the cultivating on our big field over there. And then once we've done that, we can then take the stump grinder up and we can grind that stump out. And then we can get back doing a little bit more of our plowing. Let's bring you back onto there. Slide you sideways a bit. Yep. Um, yeah, I'll put, it in, I'll put it in front of the baler for now because we don't actually need the baler for a while. I suspect that we're going to use the seed drill before we use the baler. Uh, so let's lower you down there like that and leave that one there. And I can go and get this cultivator. Right. Is cultivating after plowing a thing that you have to do? I don't think it is. I don't think you have to plow after cultivating. I mean, yeah, in real life you would go and do that. You would plow after cultivating. Uh, just because that's, you know, real life. Um... And so I do think that maybe that's something that we ought to do. Now, we want to try and get this lined up. So if I go up here, spin round, and I'm going to bring that... Yeah, I'm going to bring that one round to there. I'm going to start sort of at this point here. And then it will head down that field there. And then it should turn round at the other end, come back up, and it will all be in exactly the right spot. At least this is what I'm hoping. So I'll bring you up to... I'm going to put you to right there. Press H. And you are away. Right, so it'll go down onto that bit. There we go. And then it goes out through all of it properly. Takes a full width. And the next width that it goes up through and does will go all the way up to the very top end of the field. In theory. He says. Watching and waiting. Go on, let's see how he does it. He ought to be able to do it. There's no reason to doubt it. There is that stripe over there. It really bugs me, that stripe over there with the grass. We're going to have to go and do something about that. Uh, although that's a bit that we're going to be terraforming over there. So that stripe will hopefully get sort of absorbed and removed. And the only concern I've got here is whether or not that tree is going to be in the way. And also, something I want to know is what's terraforming like for removing hills? Are we going to be able to remove that entire hill there? Like, could, could we, like, level the whole thing out? Or is there a limit to how far down we can dig? I know that you can dig down some. So I did see it on the, the video, like the introductory video. So I know that you can dig down a bit. But how far you can dig down, I don't know. There's, uh, there's, there's something that we'll have to wait and find out. Unless... Somebody has already tested it. Somebody who's uh, sort of opted in for the beta and has already tested that bit. How far down can you dig? Let us know. Can we remove an entire hill? I know that we can't remove that because those rocks are actually objects. So those are there to stay. So we can't, like, carve a big um, road up through there. That's, that's not a thing that we'll be able to do. But there are, quite, there are quite a few bits that we will be able to do. Let's just put you down to there. 
There we go. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Right. I'll bring you back over this way now. I'm, I'm just going to park this one right close to the um, edge here because we could very well have another stump somewhere that we're going to need. So we'll just put you there. And then we'll go back over to this one. It's still going. Probably should have switched the tractor off. Really, you know, if, if you're going to walk away and leave the tractor and go and start doing a whole load of other stuff, health and safety, you, you ought to at least consider switching the engine of the tractor off, just, just to be on the safe side. So let me just lower that one down there, and we are away. Right. Now, we should be approaching the point where we're going to be doing full widths of the, full lengths of the field now. Well, we are approaching that point. We go all the way across. So this is actually where it starts to speed up. I mean, it, it's slightly slower making your way across the field, but you start to do a lot more land. You, you cover a lot more each time because obviously you, um, it, it's less to... Um, you're spending less, a, a smaller percentage of your time. That's what I'm looking for. Um, you're spending a smaller percentage of your time lifting up and turning round. That's the bit, and that's that's kind of the crucial bit, because uh, it's the lifting up and turning round that takes the majority of the time. When you're doing short work, and then when you're doing long work, it's only a minor consideration. So I want to bring that one up there, because that's about where it's lined up straight, and we do want to keep our line straight. Neighbour looks in across, and he sees the crooked plough lines. He's going to laugh at us, so we can't be having that, which means that we got to have straight plough lines all the way up through. There we go, now we're talking. Nice straight plough line all the way up through there. I've heard various different arguments for whether you should plough with the plough pointing uphill or the plough pointing downhill. The normal consensus is that you plough the way that we're doing it and so that the furrow is turned uphill. However, arguing against that is the fact that unless you've got, if you've got a, a loose soil, then turning it uphill, the soil doesn't necessarily hold and so it will slip back into the furrow that you've created and this can cause problems it makes it a bit untidy for when you're going back through especially if you're plowing like we are with one wheel in the furrow if you've got a bigger plow like the nine furrow reversible lemkin then obviously that one you're not actually driving with the wheel in the furrow so that's that's a different ball game that's um that, that's altogether different that is but when you're doing it like this you drive with your wheel in the furrow and that makes a difference however if you're plowing downhill you know doing it this way you're also moving the soil up the field ever so slightly each time you plow uh, if you're doing it the other way the soil will naturally drift downhill anyway so the topsoil layer you'll have a thinner layer of topsoil at this end of the field at this side of the field than you will down the lower end of the field and you could have like two or three feet of topsoil down there and up here you could barely have two inches uh, so if you're always plowing up the hill then you you move that soil up the hill which is a good thing it, it uh, over time this is something that's going to help if you do it the other way round obviously you're contributing to the drift of the topsoil down into the valley and leaving the hills bare so um, you know, it's, it's, it's not necessarily a good idea to start plowing at the bottom and work your way up. And also, if you're doing from the bottom all the way up to the top, um, if you're driving in the furrow, if you've got a steep field that you're plowing in, like right now, if I'm plowing this field here and it's, it's a little bit steep, you know, I'm, I'm in the furrow, so the tractor is sort of leveling a little bit. If you're going the other way, then you, you're in the furrow and you're leaning downhill more, so it becomes more unstable. And, I mean, that's only a minor consideration, really. In the grand scheme of things, you, you wouldn't... That, that, that's not quite so much of a concern. The biggest issue is going to be the the soil being dragged up or down the hill. And... Um, but it's only when you've got, like, really loose, sandy soil that you've actually got to worry about the soil dropping back into the furrow. Um, for the most part, that's not really much of an issue. So you would normally, unless there's unusual circumstances you would normally start plowing at the top of the hill at least this is what i know about it um although it has been stated a few times that it's been several years since i was involved in farming and um some things i'm i, I don't know i don't know very much about but also it, it, it does depend on what part of the world you're from so anybody that does do this anybody that does a lot of plowing 
Is this something you try to do? Do you try to start at the top of the hill and work your way down the hill every time? Or does it not really matter very much? Um, does, does it not sort of play into it? Um, what are your reasons? Um, obviously, it doesn't matter very much. Um, it'd be interesting to know why it doesn't matter about you know, the soil moving. Is that not like much of a concern where you are? Um, and, you know, if you do do it in a particular direction, why? Really like to know. Get into the comment section. Anybody that does actually do any ploughing, let me know. Why do you do what you do where you do it? Um, I know that in some places, like in uh, the Netherlands, um, this includes Holland. Holland is not the Netherlands. Um, Holland is in the Netherlands. It's part of the Netherlands, but it's not all of it. I have at least learned. See, I've learned. I have actually learned and then remembered and, and not regurgitated some rubbish that um, I thought was right but actually wasn't, you know, like Danish bacon. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, we, we won't go into that now. Um, so, yeah, like some places in the Netherlands, they actually do deep plowing and they have like a single furrow plow that plows a meter deep and goes along and like turns the soil right up over and the really funny thing about those videos you, you see the videos of this actually happening and you know it there's certain places in the world where this does need to be done in order to get nutrients back up on top of the soil and there's other things that need to be done as well i think it's to do with a clay pan forming and it removes the clay pan um things like that it's a long-term maintenance thing that needs to be done with the soil in certain parts of the world um, but the really funny thing about those videos is the number of people that go on there absolutely convinced that it's a complete and total waste of time and all it's doing is destroying the soil. Um, I'm uh, uh, the, the only reason I'm saying about this is because I watched one of these videos um, only like last night and I read some of these comments and I, I just thought it was quite amusing the way that some people are so absolutely convinced that there can be no possible reason that a farmer would do this other than he's bored or something along those lines. Why would you... You look at the machinery that is involved, the time and the effort and the machinery, and you, you've got to sort of ask yourself at some point, surely they must have a reason for doing this other than just being bored. They're not setting out to destroy the soil structure or anything like that. So there must be a real good reason to go and spend that amount of time, energy and money doing a job like this. And um, it sort of, th this is what happens. This, this is what happens. If you, if you, you know, at any public forum, you, you do invariably get all kinds of experts turning up. And some of these experts are somewhat, well, I'm, I'm going to say limited in um, life experience, could it be? Um, somewhat, I, I, I don't know. It's like, this is what happens in my backyard, therefore this must be what happens across the entire planet, and it cannot possibly be anything else. And it does, it does make me laugh sometimes. So I was looking at some of these, and then it, it sort of got me thinking. So I, I, I then went around looking at some comments on... Uh, some other videos as well, not necessarily to do with farming. Um, yeah, uh, don't spend too long looking through comment sections on videos that are on anything that might be considered controversial because you do end up losing all faith in humanity. Uh, then you need to go and, you know, watch some other stuff like uh, Alan Walker. Go, 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 and watch an, go and watch one of Alan Walker's videos. That Those are good. Th th those are always nice. And generally the comments are pretty good as well. So, you know, it, it then it, it restores your faith in humanity once more. Or well, just, you know, general um, farming videos. Most general farming videos, it, the the, um, the comment sections are pretty good. And also, like, the, the outdoor type ones. I did talk about the outdoor type ones before. Um, and I also talked about it in the live stream that I was doing. Um, TA Outdoors. Uh, he's a really good channel. I really like watching his stuff. Um... There's the, the the Wooded Beardsman, I think it is. Uh, he's quite good. I don't watch that much of his stuff. I just watch the very occasional video of that one. Um, and uh, another guy who's recently sort of started moving up 
uh, gained a whole load of subscribers in the last. He's, he's gone like from 30,000 to nearly 200,000 in the last six weeks because of his camping videos that he's done and they're absolutely brilliant he's not got very many videos but he is actually now on my recommended channels list and i really enjoy watching his videos uh rune rune malt something i i honestly i can't remember the rest of his name but um it's definitely worth checking out uh if, you, if you're at all interested in camping videos um any kind of outdoors pursuits anything like that he's definitely worth having a look at he's also really really good with the camera and it's quite artistic the way that he's done it as well looks very cool right we've done an awful lot of plowing so far on this episode we haven't finished this field um i'm aware that this could get a bit dull we've got other plows that we could go and try and I, this is what i was thinking i was wondering if we ought to try a different plow as part of this episode there aren't that many that we can choose from though because some of the plows they don't have the option to create fields You've only got the ones that are in the plow category that allow you to create fields. You can't use the other ones, although the other ones do class as plows. You've got to have the field already created in order to be able to use them. So we got this one here that's creating fields. And we will keep this plow. We're not going to return it or anything. But I'm thinking that we could go and lease another one just to speed this up a bit. Because it's going to take forever otherwise. We are going to be here for absolutely ever and a day. So if we just have a look a minute into here you got power harrows right there so there's not a big range on that um cultivators here now some of these cultivators have options cultivator prepares oh well they used to some of them used to have options for um deep ah on oh, no, a uh, seed directly no previous cultivating or plowing necessary that's just a direct seeder and cultivator Okay, uh, disc harrows, subsoilers, that's what it says, under the subsoilers, the subsoiler, uh, it can't be used instead of a plow, but I don't think it actually, it, the bed, what is this, a subsoiler, fertilizer, okay, that one seems to have got absolutely, I've not seen this one before, this one seems to have got everything, right, you've got deep ripper there, You've got a cultivator on the back. You've got a fertilizer tank as well. We're going to need to try that bad boy out. We're definitely going to need to try that bad boy out. And then you've got this one here, but I don't think this one allows create fields. Eight meters wide. It does require 420 horses, which is a fair slice. Um, but it doesn't allow create fields, as far as I know. Um, and none of these actually allow you to create fields. Or they, they didn't used to. In FS17, you couldn't create fields with those. Although that is a new category, you still couldn't create fields with them. These are the only ones. And create new fields right there. See, it does specifically state create new fields. Whereas if you go into here, it only says uh can be used instead of a plow so i'm thinking that's an established field and not allowing creation of a new field and that's the distinction between the two this one would be good i don't like the sulfur this one would also be very cool but i don't think that one would work very well in our field here i think it's just a smidgen too big and also we don't have the power for it so we're gonna go for the lemkin we're gonna have to go for the lemkin we don't have any other options at the moment we're gonna lease that one for five thousand euros it's on Euros because I was just recording the um, time lapse recently. So I'm going to deliberately leave that on Euros so that I don't mess it up. Um, I'm going to bring... Actually, I could go and put the plow back. Am I going to want this one again? I, I'm going to go and put this plow away. I'm going to put this one down here somewhere. I'm not quite sure where we're going to put it away. We'll do it next to the water tank here. We'll go up back into that bit there. Nearly, no, we didn't run over our dog. He's fine. We'll back up through there and we'll drop the plow right there like that. There we go. And then we're going to go racing off and we're going to get our new plow. And we can come back and we should be able to do that bit just a teensy bit faster. There's the bad boy. I see the glimpse of blue behind the tree. There it is. In all its glory. You know I didn't have my beacons on all the way up here. For shame, Frithgar. For shame. 
Go and grab that one there. There we go. Now we're talking. Look at this bad boy. Look at it. It's a beast. Absolute beast. Can we beat that car if I put my beacons on? Maybe I can beat it then. Yeah, look. Hot stuff coming through. Big old plow like this. A bit difficult to weave around the very small roads. But we should still be able to do this without too much trouble. It's the the great big um, the Gregoire Besson plow. That's, that's the one that you really struggle to get around the small roads. But then you're not really going to need... A, what is that Gregoire one? That's like a 21 furrow plow, isn't it? You're not really going to need to worry about getting a 21 furrow plow around fields like this. Let's have a look. We, we, we need to count this. We, we need to count this bad boy up. Let's have a look. Let's go to you. That is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. It's 20. 20 furrow reversible plow. 20! Seriously, that's insane. 20 furrow reversible plow. I remember when I was a very small boy and my dad still had a farm, we had a four furrow reversible plow. Right, four. No, actually, he didn't even have a reversible plow. It was his neighbor that had a reversible one. He borrowed it once. Um, but no, it, it, his was, I, don't, I believe his wasn't a reversible plow. It was just like a, reg, you know, a normal one-sided plow. Um, didn't even have the luxury of being able to turn the thing over. And that was it. Four furrows. And then right there in the shop, for more than a lot of people pay for a house, you've got a 20 furrow reversible plow. That's insane. That is genuinely ludicrously insane. It, it really is. It's, it's, it's properly, like, I've said this before, but I will say it again. Insane, man. Absolutely insane. Right, we'll bring you down to there, and then we'll flip you over to this side so that we can start doing our little bit of plowing. Uh... Right, yeah, we, we, we do need to do a little run up through with this one. So if I bring that to about there, allow create fields, drop you down into the ground. Now we're talking. Start hauling you up through here. See, this one here, you don't actually drive in the furrow with the wheel. You drive next to. So the, the wheel having to go in the furrow is no longer a concern with this plow. Is that much of a monster plow? Bring that one up round here. I don't know what this one will be like over the rougher ground. Over there. We, we're not going to have to worry about that because we don't actually have any rougher ground that we're going to do with it. But we will bring it back round here. There we go. Look, you you got to have a much bigger turning circle with this thing. Much bigger turning circle. We'll bring you back around there. Right, is that lined up? It's fairly well lined up. Hopefully it's not going out too far out the back because otherwise it's going to make the edge of the field look untidy. We might have to do another pass. So then we come along here. And if I drive with the wheel in the furrow, it's already it's like there's too much overlap. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on. There's one other thing that we want to do. Bring you back here. Bring you back like that. Now, this one's adjustable. This one here. You can adjust it like that. Or you can adjust it like that. And if you adjust it that way... This way here, it does narrow, so if you've got really heavy soil, you do it that way. And then if you've got lighter soil, you do a wider furrow like that, and you do it on that one. So we're going to do it on that one, just because we're going to assume that we've got a lighter soil, and also it's it's a wider cut then. So a, a, a wider swath across the field. There. So we want to have our wheel up on the grass. We don't want to be down in the furrow at all. Stop drifting around. And look at this... So much better than our other plow. So much faster. We might actually be able to finish doing this field today at this rate. Right, with, with, this, with this bad boy right here, we may actually have a chance of being able to do the whole of the rest of the field today. Because it's only going to be like five passes and that's going to be it. And then we can get our little cultivator going on here. And he can start working his way down through it. And then we're also going to want to get planting done. Grass being planted in here, by the way. Definitely planting grass in here. We're not doing any crops in here at the moment. We will do some grass, and then we'll be able to do some more bales. Um, I know that we've done quite a few bales. I'm thinking, though, that we'll trade up on our balers. Because, you know, it's, it's great and all having the round baler. It's just so much better having a square baler. 
So maybe we'll lease the square baler just to start with, and then we can always upgrade and buy later on. All right, that should be sufficient there. I've uh, got to turn the plow. That's the other thing with this one. On the wheels and that, the wheels change that they turn slightly as you turn it. So if you flip the plow over, the wheels then go in a slightly different position behind you. Bring that one back. See, they've drifted off to the different side. Bring you over there. Right, I think that's about right there. It's not going to be quite right at the end of the field here because the, the plow has got to drift out behind us. It'll be fine, though. It'll be absolutely fine. I reckon three, well, probably four. Four more passes and then we'll be done. Right across this bit in the middle. That's the bit that we couldn't cut. We couldn't do anything with that. And you know, obviously we got several patches of that that we couldn't cut and do anything with. Now, of course, plow it all up. We'll plant it. We'll also get lime on here. We'll do everything that we can possibly do to it to make it absolutely perfect. So we're going to need to lime it. We're going to need to um, make sure it's got all the necessary fertilizer, everything. We want the whole works on this. And then once we've done all that, we will be able to get... We'll get absolutely loads of grass. It's we, We're going to be... We are going to make a fortune selling these bales. An absolute fortune. Uh, which is probably a good job because we're also going to spend a fortune on a baler and a wrapper and everything else that we need in order to be able to make the bales that we're going to make the fortune with. So, yeah, we we, we might end up, after all of it, with uh, ooh, maybe 5 or $6 profit. Maybe as much as 7 or 8 You never can tell in this game. And by this game, I don't just mean farming simulator, I mean farming in general. It's often been said, I've said it before, and people have said it in the comments section. The best way to make a million dollars in farming is to start out with $2 million in farming. That is probably your easiest way. Because, um, yeah, other than that, it's it's a gamble. That's what you're doing. Essentially, you are gambling. That's what farmers do. Every year, they plant their crops, and then they gamble on the weather being right, the pests not turning up, the diseases holding off, and maybe affecting your neighbor rather than you. Uh, it depends if you like your neighbor, really. Um... So, yeah, you've got all of these different things. And if, you, if you're someone that only kind of, you, you don't gamble and you only go for something if you're absolutely certain it's going to work and you don't like to take risks, yeah, farming may not necessarily be the place for you because you know, farming is all about risk. Most of it is risk. There's, there's very little to do with farming that isn't like calculated risk. It is calculated risk. So you, you are able to do things to, like, lessen the absolute risk. But it's still risky. It is still a very, very risky business. Let's bring that round there. Um, oops. Well, we didn't want to do that. Okay, I, I ought really to lift the plough out of the ground when I'm reversing it. Because I understand it's, it's not good for the plough to reverse it while it's in the ground. Things can go bang. Things can snap. And that's not necessarily a good thing. We, we, we don't necessarily want that to happen. Right. What do you reckon? Two passes? We go, we go up here. I mean, after this pass. After this one, of course. We go up here. We come back through. And then one more should close out the field. Around about the time we want to close out the episode. So that'll work out quite nicely for us. I do... It is looking nice here. We have got a beautiful, great, big field here. And the tractor and the plow, they seem to go well together. It's just a shame that we can't use the hired help to do all of it. You can use the hired help. We've established that you can use the hired help a little bit with allow create fields because it does leave the allow create fields on. And so it does allow you to use the hired help to like get a nice straight edge on the field if you want to. But it doesn't sort of do everything on allow create fields. It doesn't like work across on a new field or anything like that. So... You, you are a little bit limited on what you can do with it. But there's there's more scope for things that you can do with it than there used to be. Now, I realise that ploughing around this corner is probably not the most realistic thing to do right now. Uh, but I think it's going to be alright. Because we've got to do a little bit of tidying up on that end anyway. So, yeah, it'll be fine. See, what I tell you, one more pass after this one. I said two passes after the one after the last one. So we come up through it. It's not even a full pass. It's a half a pass. That's all we've got left is half a pass. But look, it's looking fantastic. I'm actually really pleased with this. 
We should have switched over. We should have switched over to this plow earlier. Because this, this one's awesome. This one's doing a fantastic job. Really big plow, yes. I'm, I'm actually really liking this plow. I'm thinking this is good. One thing we haven't done, which I might actually go and do in our next episode, is we haven't gone and looked at contracting. We haven't done any contracting yet. So we could go and do a bit of that. And you can leave hired help going. So if we, if there is a plowing job, we can use this plow. And we can use this tractor. And they can go and start doing some contracting. Then we can come back to the farm. And we can do some planting. And we can do some... Um, uh, cultivating, stuff like that. We, you know, there's a whole load of different jobs that we can do back here while the contracting job is going on. Um, we can make use of this plough. We can get this plough to actually pay for itself. I, th I think this could be quite a good thing to go and do. We want to finish this up first, though. A little run up through here. So I'm... It doesn't matter where we go, I suppose. Whether I overlap onto the field down there a little bit. That's about as far as I can pull it down. And it is just plowing into the established field ever so slightly. I was wondering if I should do there, but I'm not going to. We're not going to plow anything along there because it's going to go too tight to the house and I don't want to do that. You, you, you do want a little bit of gap between the back of the house and the field because you've still got to have room for the machinery to be able to turn, uh, just be able to get past in general without sweeping the back end of the porch off the house. That would be quite useful. Now we'll bring this one up um i'm not gonna turn it just yet not like flip the plow over I'm just gonna turn around like this it's not actually very rough here though so it should be okay with this um i was just wondering if it's gonna be able to actually plow this because of the uneven ground but it's yeah it's, it's not too bad should be all right bring you up around there yeah that's fine that's absolutely fine is it going to do the last little bit with one more? Just one final shove on this. Is that going to be enough to turn the plow just for this bit? And that's, that is going to stick out into the field for us a bit. But still, that's, that's a small price to pay. Drop you in there and that's it. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. Just in case... I am just going to grab that little tiny bit right there. There. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.